Hey y'all, Chuck here in Tat Phanom, Thailand. Hey, it's time for another weekly question and answer. Um, got a lot of questions. We're headed in the morning to Ganchanapodi, so uh, I've got quite a few questions piled up. I won't be able to do them on our trip, so I did a live stream this morning, and I put out a video of Sunday Funday this morning, and now I'm going to do this uh, Q&A. <laughs> And hopefully I don't lose my voice. So anyway, I've got quite a few questions, so let's get started. First question is by Shah Ghazni. Hi Chuck, what is the name of the town across the river at the Lao border? Can we travel across the river from Nakom Pano? Uh, been been to a few cities in Thailand, but never to Isan yet. Uh, he's been on border towns that go across to Malaysia, he says. Um, yes, uh, in the comp you can get across the border actually in a couple of places. We're in Tat Phanom, which is in the middle of Mukdahan, and the Kom Phanom. So there's two friendship bridges that go across into Laos. So in the Nakom Phanom side, it's nice to stay in the Kom Phanom. I did a, a video just recently on 10 things to do in the Kom Phanom. And Nakom Phnom has a lot of stuff to offer, and especially if you want to run across the border and see, uh, see Lao. But on the Nakom Phnom side, on the Friendship Bridge, when you go across, there's just really mountains right there. So you have to go a little south to a, a town called Thaket. Uh There's not too much to do in this town. Um, you know, typical stuff like you would see in uh, Isan, pretty much, markets and stuff like that. Temples. The mountain scenery is beautiful. But if you're going to go across, I recommend going to the Mukdahan Friendship Bridge um, and to Savanakit. Savanakit has a lot of beautiful temples, a lot of, a lot of places to go. They also have a casino if you're into gambling. Uh, a lot of people come to Tat Phanom to see the temple and the stuff in the Kom Phanom, and then they shoot across from Mukdahan into Savanakit, and they gamble, and, and, and there's nightlife and stuff like that there. But the, the casino is really nice. It's a luxury casino. Um, but yeah, you can go across, go across to Lao from there. Now, I will tell you, you're going to need a visa to stay in, in Lao. Because it is a communist country, so uh, you will need a visa to go over there. Which is no big deal, it's just another piece of paper stuck in your passport. <laughs> Next question, Walter Boix. Boix, do you have internet cafes in Thailand? Uh, you know, that's a really big thing in Thailand is the cell phones. Every, just about every restaurant place you go to has Wi-Fi. So, but I mean, everybody's always constantly on their phone. They're, they love to go to these little coffee shops all over Thailand and sit there and talk on their phone, just like back in the Western world. Uh, there's a ton of cafe, internet cafe shops all over Thailand. There's a bunch here in Tat Phanom. Next question. Russell Brain. Chuck, you make me sick. Ha <laughs> ha. You live in Thailand in a lovely city right there on the Mekong. Do you find bureaucracy there difficult? Uh, he's referring to the 90 day reporting. Um, no, there is no bureaucracy here. Um, everybody's really friendly here. There's, uh, I've never heard of anybody actually having a problem checking in on a 90 day. That's really not a big deal. You can actually go online and do that online too. Um, but to check in, it usually doesn't take any time at all. You go in there, you fill out a form, uh, they look at it, and then they tear it off, and they staple it in your passport, and they stamp a, a return 90 day date. It's really very simple. There wouldn't be any bureaucracy on a 90-day deal anyway. So, And the visa stuff is fine. Uh, 
being in a rural area, it takes a little bit longer to get things approved like in a marriage visa because all the paperwork has to be shipped outside. The easiest one is the uh, retirement visa. Uh, next question. Jonas Johnson. Thanks for the video about the dogs. How did your friends react before they got bitten? Did they stay and hold their ground, or did they back away in a frightened way? I think that may be important, how you act. Um, I, I think you might be talking about the video where we went and seen all the huskies. I'm not sure, but I mentioned I have two friends now that got bit by dogs. The, rabies is, uh, they're trying to put a control on it. They're trying to control it right now. They're sending trucks out and giving uh, shots to millions of dogs, uh, rabies shots. And they're really putting on the news, trying, begging people to come in and get their dogs uh, rabies shots. Um, cats, dogs, you know, stuff like that. But um, my, one of my first friend, he, said, he told me that he, he'd gone to a restaurant, he's seen this dog there several times. Um, the dog is a, a, just a fat dog that lays around the restaurant. He bent over to pet, he said when he looked at the dog, the dog did, he said it didn't look right, and just kind of looked at him funny, and then he went to reach down to pet him, and the dog bit him. So he went to the hospital, had to get 15 shots. Um, then another friend of mine said he was just, oh, but the same friend got bit again uh, walking down the street, and he said the dog just came up him and bit him in the leg. But he'd already just got the shot, so he didn't have to, he just had to get a, a penicillin shot, or take penicillin. Uh, then the other friend of mine said that a dog just came up to him and bit him. I had mentioned in a video prior, I said, if you see a dog coming at you, um, it may want to bite you. It may not come at you in an aggressive way. It may just be coming to bite you. But a lot of people that know dogs, can, a dog usually uh, reacts in a friendly way with the dog, with the tail shaking and all that. And you can usually tell. But either way, you still need to be careful because dogs, a lot of dogs here are not pets. And if you're reaching down, they may think that you're trying to give them food and they may bite you, but they're very territorial here in Thailand, uh, especially late in the evenings, or early in the mornings. Um, I'm not a dog expert. I will tell you that I used to, me and my ex used to raise, raise uh, Rottweilers and Belgium melon walls. Uh, we, we did uh, obedience training and defense training, and uh, we trained dogs for Lackland Air Force Base uh, in uh, in Texas, and uh, we would train these. I would I was the one in the in the in the bite suit. You know, I know a little bit how to read a dog, but um, dogs are very unpredictable for sure. But if a dog has rabies, uh, the dog is extremely unpredictable. Uh, the dog is sick, so you don't really. I think running away. Running away from a dog is the worst thing to do because then you become prey. Uh, it's instinct for it to go after you when you're running. Um, but when you come face to face with a dog, it's best to stand your ground and not <clears throat> not show any fear. But it's best it's best not to make a whole lot of movement and back back away from the dog or or stand your ground and yell stop stop. You know, kind of be the dominant force, but don't try to uh, attack the dog with a stick or, or what. I mean, if you have to, you have to, but really just need to stand your ground so the dog understands that it's not going to be a simple, <laughs> you're not going to be a simple uh, prey. But if it's got rabies, then, you know, it's, it's really hard to read that dog. The dog is sick, so... Just be careful around dogs and try to stay away from them. When you see a dog, you know, it's not like America or the or UK where you can go, oh, hey, you know, puppy, puppy, puppy. It's, they're, they, uh, they're sitting in front of somebody's house and they may bite you just because of ter they're territorial. Anyway, be careful with the dogs. 
Um, Patrick Forsman has a couple questions here. Shopping for a house, do you have IKEA? Yes, there's an IKEA in Thailand if that's where you need to go shop, but uh, they, they do have an IKEA. They have uh, like uh, furniture stores all over the place that have similar stuff. I can't show you now, but in, in the room, uh, we have a big cabinet. It's kind of like IKEA stuff, so it's functional here in Thailand. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I like IKEA. I would buy IKEA stuff back in the States, but uh, they do have it here. But there's a lot of other options for shopping in Thailand. IKEA is very expensive here. Uh, number, his second question is, uh, driving drunk in Thailand, what is the limit? Um, the legal limit is 0.05%. Uh, what that, if you're an average slender build, let's say you're a slim guy, if you had two beers within an hour, chances are you will be over the legal limit. So, um, you don't want to be driving drunk in Thailand for sure. Uh, most bigger guys can handle two to four. It all depends on your body weight. But typically when you go have lunch somewhere, you're eating food, you may have a beer or two or four, but you're sitting there over, a, over an hour period of time. Uh, time has a lot to do uh, with the blood alcohol content. So uh, just to be safe, I would say you're two beers, two Thailand beers, an hour if you're not eating a lot of food is the limit but most people don't drive here anyway now if you get pulled if you're drinking and you're drunk and you get pulled over uh, you can go to jail for up to three months or you could get a 60,000 baht fine yeah, but a lot of people a lot of Thai people drink so they have these during the holidays they set up these little substations on the sides of the freeway and they have coffee and cookies and a place for them to take a nap uh, and stuff like that. They'll, they'll make them park their car. This year, they confiscated hundreds and thousands of mopeds and cars. And what they did was, once they caught them, they took possession of their transportation, sent them on their way with a fine, and then told they had a waiting period before they could come get their, their stuff. But there were still a lot of deaths this year. Number three, do you travel in Thailand with your passport? You have four questions, five questions here, okay. Yes, whenever we travel in Thailand, I always have my passport with me. I keep it in the car. But you need to show that, like, if you're staying in a major hotel or a popular resort, they're going to want to see your passport to make a copy of that. Uh, they have to file that. Uh, report with immigration. So, yeah, you need to carry your passport with you. Um, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, I've got an ID card, I've got this and that, but they don't, untie, people don't understand that most of the time. Uh, why you even have a, a, a Thai foreigner's um, ID card, but their rules tell them they have, if there's a fog in there, they'll get a fine if they do not have a copy of your passport. So uh, I, I've actually been in a situation where I didn't bring it and I had my driver's license with me and it was a matter of, okay, well, we'll just go somewhere else or you just take a picture of my driver's license because that's all I have that actually has my passport number in there. And they just eventually said it was okay. But it's easy just to carry your passport with you around but don't when you check into the hotel make sure you keep it locked up safely or keep it somewhere secure you don't want to carry it around I don't carry it in my pocket with me all the time no uh, your next question top five places I want to go to in Thailand I, I don't know I want to go everywhere I live anywhere by the beach uh, I really enjoy so an island, uh, Gochang, Gopayam, Koh Samoy, 
Phuket. Uh, there's a lot of Rayong, Renong. I don't have a top five yet. Uh, your last part of your questions is food at the big rest stops okay? Um, I guess you're talking about the PTT stations where we buy fuel and they've got seems like everything there. Uh, those rest, the food there other than what's in the 7-Eleven, uh, the people that sell food outside, they just rent the space or rent the building and the food is really just as good as eating anywhere in Thailand. Yeah, the food is great. Uh, my in-laws, they prefer to stop there because it's really clean. Uh, when traveling, you can always guarantee that the food there is going to be clean and you have a variety of stuff to choose from. Next question. HK91762MM. Really? Oh, what is the meaning of 555? Okay. I, get, I actually get this asked a lot, and it's, of course, understandable. If you're not married to a Thai person or speak Thai or live in Thailand, um, and I think a lot of people that live in Thailand don't even know what that is, but the letter 5 in Thai language is ha, ha. So it's nung song sit si ha. So ha, ha, ha. Get it? That's what it is. Ha, ha, ha. It's the same as LOL. Next question, John Croker. Hi, Chuck. Sticks in the ground growing is cassava. All around Karat as well. Yes, I've had other people come and tell me. I'm, he's referring to a video I did in Ubon. Uh, we passed these, uh, these fields and they, and they, where they had the crops. They had these, just these sticks in the ground. Uh, then I saw another section with sticks and little leaves coming up. I was like, damn, them sticks are growing. I, I didn't know what they were, but uh, anyway, thanks. It's a cassava plant. <laughs> Next question, Bill Beach. Watching your recent Q&A videos, and came up with a question. Okay. Are there tropical storms like typhoon or others? Uh, yes, Thailand does have typhoons, mostly down south. Um, up here, we're protect. There's a lot of uh, hurricanes and stuff that come out uh, over by Vietnam, but it never gets past uh, Lao because of the giant mountains. We just get a little bit of a depression uh, if it makes it this far. But um, uh, there, is, there are typhoons. Uh, I don't think there, and I've looked, there's, there's never been a hurricane on record in Thailand, but there has been tropical depressions, uh, typhoons, and uh, you know, stuff like that. There's been some major storms, but never a hurricane has, has reached the land that I could find. Uh, but not, not very often. Just really certain times of the year down south, there's, a, there's typhoons. But next question, Nick. St. Dennis. Hello, sir. How are you? My name is Nick St. Dennis. Hello, Nick. <laughs> I am Canadian, and I have recently looked at some of your videos. Thank you. I find them very good and really appropriate. I probably could have skipped all this. Thank you. With very good in info. Thank you very much for that. Thank you for watching. Uh, maybe you already answered that question in another video, but I was looking to learn to speak Thai. How did you learn, and how long did it take you? Thank you for your great videos. Have a great day. Thank you very much for all the wonderful comments. Um, okay, this is asked a lot, so I'm going to go through it again. Uh, about I know I have a lot of videos out there, so it's difficult to keep up with all of all of the information I have out there. But, um, I had about a 50-word vocabulary coming to Thailand. Um, I studied uh, books and the Rosetta Stone and you know all kind of stuff uh, that I could manage between you know the American dream, right? So I had about a 50-word vocabulary coming here. I learned pretty fast that those words actually meant nothing other than uh, me memorizing other than me memorizing words, I, I, they didn't sound 
correctly. I didn't have the tones right. So I didn't understand it at first because if a, a Chinese person or a Hispanic person or anybody who tries to speak English, we can gather what they're saying. We, you know they have a strong accent. But in Thailand, they don't know what the hell you're saying. If you're off one tone, it means nothing to them. Or it means something different, and they don't understand where you're going. So it's difficult with one-word sentences. So if you're just saying one word, that if you can put it in a sentence, they can kind of figure out what you're saying. But accent means everything. So anyway, I, I ended up finding a teacher here in, in my area that spoke English. And I paid her one-on-one -on -one to teach me. I went every day, five days a week, two, two to three hours a day. And uh, I learned the Thai alphabet in two weeks. I'm not a fast learner, um, but I just, I did it. I, I committed to it every single day. I made flashcards. I learned the alphabet. I learned the tones. Uh, I learned the vowels. Um, the most important thing is to, I think, uh, with Thai language, because it's a tonal language, is to learn the alphabet. Uh, if you can learn the alphabet and the tones, um, you know, then you can properly say the word right. But it also is going to require an accent to go along with it. So it, it's difficult. It really is. But it takes time and it gets frustrating and still today when I talk to new people um, they don't know if I don't say it right they don't know if I'm speaking Thai I could be saying anything uh, they don't they don't know so I always try to start a conversation you know so with cops and like my all one yeah I got on so they understand that I'm trying to communicate with them in Thai and then I'll say what I need to say Diesel uh, Dintang I need I need diesel on, but I need you to fill up my tank. So they kind of got an understanding. But if I just walk up to them and say Diesel Dintang, they might not know if I'm speaking French or anything. So it's frustrating and it's difficult, but it takes time. But all that being said, I think it's extremely important to learn the Thai alphabet when you're trying to learn a language and phonics. Uh, it's very difficult to try to make it sound right. And uh, I'll touch more on that on the last question. Next question, HVAC genius. How has Thailand changed me? Well, I mentioned this before, and I also made a video, an older video of uh, one of me and Paige traveling uh, in South Dakota uh, in, in America. And instead of showing, and, and here's my thinking on that, instead of showing the beautiful scenery, and uh, I mean, it was just amazingly beautiful where we were at, I was worried about little things like sandals, the heat. Uh, I was worried about sunscreen, which you needed to be out there. Uh, but I was talking about the accommodations at the at the travel trailer park and some of this stuff and I was like man I was just so worried about all these little things and and we're so worried about comfort everything has to be uh, the way we expect it to be you know and, and uh, I was just looked at that video and I was like man I really was an uptight person you know worried about the craziest thing now when we travel I mean sometimes the bed's hard as a rock you know or uh Sometimes the air conditioner is not that well. Uh, sometimes it's noisy. Sometimes it smells musty. I mean, really, you just got to look. It's just, it's just, oh, well, you know, no problem. Uh, as long as there's no bugs crawling on me, you know, I'm, I'm okay. But Thailand has changed me because I'm more sabai sabai. I'm not really, sabai sabai means not really worried. It's like, uh, not really worried about a whole lot, you know, just minute to minute, day by day. Um, really have nothing to really stress out and worry about here. Um, if you're that type of person, it will be difficult for you to live in Thailand uh, because everybody around you is uh, not uptight at all. So uh, if you've got a problem with something, they just think, well, well, it's, 
up to you. <laughs> you know, nobody's gonna come rush to you and try to make pat you on the back and tell you everything's gonna be okay here. Uh, you know, Thailand's changed me because I don't worry too much about, and I I don't have a lot of things. Uh, anymore like I used to. So I don't have a lot of anchors. I don't have a lot of stuff weighing me down. A lot of stuff to worry about anymore. Um, but somebody, somebody. <laughs> a lot of people got it. They understood. They saw, you know, they know the videos now and they've seen that video. Yeah, you've changed quite a bit. Last question. Uh, Liam Hunting says, uh, it's not, he doesn't really have a question, but I just want to talk about something here. He says, uh, I, w I made a video of Ubon, and we went to uh, the, the uh, Manam Kong and the Manamun River, uh, which is the Mekong and the Moon River. So he states, uh, it's Moon River. I heard you say it like Moon. So he's correcting my, he's correcting me on uh, not Moon or Moon. It's, it's moon, like the moon. So I was saying, I was talking to people there uh, about Moon River, and they kept correcting me, saying, no, moon, moon, moon. And it sounded like they were saying with a G on the end. <clears throat> but it's actually moon, moon. It's moon river. So they were correcting me, and I didn't understand what they were saying, but as it's spelt, it's moon in Thai. Uh, but in English, it's spelled, well, it's still spelled M-U-N, but sometimes people spell it M-O-O-N. But uh, when I was there, it was spelled M-U-N. If you look on a map, it's spelled M-U-N. But if you look, if you read it in Thai, it's spelled Mun. <laughs> anyway, what I, my point, here's what I, here's what I want to make a point about. I'm constantly corrected by people, uh, telling me how to say stuff because I misspeak or I said something wrong. Uh, I'm not trying, I'm trying to tell you something, a place that I've been in Thai language. And I live in Thailand and I, I'm, I'm trying to learn to speak Thai. So instead of contradicting me on how to say stuff, why don't you pay attention and listen to what I'm trying to tell you? Because most likely you cannot, you may not be able to read Thai. If you could read Thai, then you could say it like a Thai person. And, and I was trying to tell you in the video, like Mekong, the Mekong River. So the Mekong River. So in Thai language, uh, a river is Manong, Manong. Um, and they call that river Kong. Uh, if you say, where do you live? Oh, I live near the river. To say that means Remkong, uh, Banyu, Banyu T Remkong, my home is by the river. Uh, they don't, Thai people don't normally say Mekong. Do they know Mekong? Yes, they know Mekong. They understand Mekong. Some may even call it Mekong, but Thai word is Manam Kong. <laughs> the Mun River or Moon River is Manam Mun. Call it whatever you want. I was uh, just trying to tell you how they were telling me to say it in Thai. Who, who, Whoever decided to write Thai words in English form didn't do us any justice, I promise you. Um, let's just take Kanchanaburi, for instance. In English, it's spelled with a K, Kanchanaburi. If you tell somebody in Thai, and I've done this a hundred times, I promise you, oh, I'm going to go to Kanchanaburi. They don't know what you're saying. Uh, they'll think, they'll know I'm going on a trip, but they don't, they've never been to Kanchanaburi because they've never heard of it. Because Kanchanaburi is not spelt like that in Thai. It's the first letter in Kanchanaburi is Gogai. It's it starts with a G sound. It's Kanchanaburi. Kanchanaburi, not Kanchanaburi. Here's another couple of examples. I won't burn up the subject or bore you, but. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of funny, um, and and not knowing how to speak Thai or traveling around Thailand very much or read Thai, you really never would know these things. But I like to share this stuff with you guys to try to. For example, Chicago. 
okay? If nobody's ever been to America and they see Chicago, they would probably think it says Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. It's not Chicago, it's Chicago. It's not spelled with a SH, it's spelled with a CH. It's Chicago. Uh, and I was corrected this not too long ago, and it would be crazy for me to argue with somebody uh, from Australia. I kept saying Melbourne, Melbourne, oh, you're from Melbourne, Australia. Well, you know, like, you can't, that's not how you say it. It's Melbourne. I would have never known that. It's not, it's spelt in English, Melbourne, but that's not how you pronounce it. You pronounce it Melbourne. So out of respect, it's Melbourne. I trust you, right? I'm, maybe there's people where you live that say Melbourne. I don't know. I've never been there. Um, the River Kwai. That is a popular movie, and a pop. I mean, a lot of people know the River Kwai uh, is in Thailand. They've heard it before, but it's not the River Kwai. The people who live there understand that what you're saying. That's the River Kwai. They know. And they they'll put on a shirt the River Kwai. But it's not Kwai. In Thai, it's Manam Kwe. Kwe. <laughs> the river Kwe. It's not Kwai, it's Kwe. And every now and then you'll get somebody uh, that may try to teach you, oh, it's Kwe, not Kwai. It's not. If I tell somebody here in Tapanom, oh, I'm going to go to Manam Kwai, they won't know what I'm talking about. I got to say Manam Kwe. Not Manam Kwe, Manam Kwe. It's why it becomes frustrating. So, uh, I know I don't say things perfect all the time. I apologize about that. You know, I think from other places around the world, we have difficult times understanding. Um, a lot of times, people say, "Why do you say sewati ka?" I don't say. I never say sewati ka is what women say, but I say sewati ka, and maybe they don't hear the B. I don't. I don't know. But I'm not saying sawatika, sawatika. I'm not doing that. Uh, you can tell the difference between ka and ka. But we say ka here. The proper word is ka, sawatika, uh, with raw rua, with the R sound. But, uh, one more is uh, Kolchang. So Kolchang is an island. Everybody's familiar with that. Um, Ko in Thai language is not call. It doesn't start with K. It's not spelt K-H-O or K-O or K-O-H. It starts with ga gai with a G sound. Go. Go chan. Go. The island is go. Go chan. If I say ko chan, I'm going to ko chang. <laughs> that could be on Mars. So go chan. Go. Go. But they spelt it with a K. Why? I have no idea. Whoever did that did us foreigners wrong <laughs> by doing that. Uh, but anyway, that's enough examples. Uh, I just wanted to uh, explain to you guys a couple of differences in English uh, versus Thai. And uh, if I say something, sometimes doesn't. Sometimes I think say things that I. I don't know exactly what they're saying, and I'm trying to repeat it before I can, before they can spell it out to me, and I may have said it wrong. But uh, <clears throat> the proper way is to read it and then and then say it in the right tone um, and using the right vowel sound, whether it's sala a, sala a, uh, sala you know, sala u, sala e. <laughs> those are the uh, those are the uh, vowels in Thai, and uh, yeah, they're, they're a little bit difficult to, to learn. But not just that, there's also a pitch. There's five tones. Uh, one word can mean five different things if you don't say it correctly. And for me, some of the tones are just, they're impossible. There's no way I could say it properly. I think I'm saying it right, but it doesn't come out right, and I, I have to put it in a, a deep in a sentence before it's understandable. <laughs> That's it, guys. That's all the questions I'm going to do right now. Um, I hope it was informational for you. I, I hope I got your questions uh, answered good enough. If not, ask me again. Uh, if you feel like I didn't answer it properly or somebody wants to put in there uh, 
two cents, <laughs> go right ahead. I don't have a problem with that at all, so feel free. Um, if you've got any more questions, please keep them coming. Please subscribe to the channel. We've got a lot of awesome videos coming up. We're doing a whole lot of traveling here in the next eight days. So uh, headed to Karat in the morning. Going to bring you guys along for that. Stay tuned. Kanchana Bori is going to be awesome. And uh, yeah, thank you guys very much for the wonderful comments and keep the questions coming. Chok di, sawat di ka, lao jok and I'll see you guys later.